Hi, I'm James and I'm going to be taking you through exercise four. Uh, this first slide is really just a hint at two of the possible answers to this exercise. So you don't actually need to say anything at this point. Um, so you're going to tell the class at this point that uh, this exercise is another exercise about revising or editing sentences. Um, but in this case, the target audience consists of experienced professional software engineers who are just being introduced to a new or unfamiliar technology for the first time. So at this point, you're going to introduce the class to these three sentences. Um, and you want to really invite them to rearrange or add or delete or change any words as they see fit. Um, and you're going to want to give them about three or four minutes for this exercise. But it's really up to you how you're um, managing your time. So once you've had your three uh, or four minutes, you want to invite everyone back to the class and um, at this point, invite them to trade answers with their partner and after trading arguments, uh, invite them to revise their answers. So at this point, you want to say something like, hopefully you all realised that this exercise was about um, sentence length and maybe highlight the fact that all of the sentences in exercise four were longer than they needed to be. So at this point, you're going to reveal the possible answers to question one. And um, it's really up to you, but perhaps you could ask them if anyone thought the first answer was too short or if it's the right length. Um, you could also get them to consider the two final answers, which are actually both real student submissions from previous classes, um, and ask them what they think about using metaphors or analogies in documentation. Um, Ask them if they can foresee any issues with using these. You could also ask them if they think the horseradish analogy is meaningful in other parts of the world if they don't get that um, hint from the previous question. But ideally, you're really looking for them to say something like there are going to be issues with localization or translation. So at this point, you're going to reveal a possible answer to question two. The original sentence contained a lot of wasted words. You might want to highlight that it removes the clause. It is important to keep in mind that which makes the sentence unnecessarily long and doesn't really add anything to the sentence. So here is a possible answer to question three. Again, the original was very long. Um, so you might want to ask the class if anyone used um, a list or a table. And if they didn't use a list or a table, um, perhaps ask them how many sentences their answer contained. Um, if they didn't use a list, it's probably best to use at least two sentences. So for the class discussion, you essentially just want to ask them if anyone knows what Occam's razor is and if they want to share their answer with the class. Um, if they don't have an answer, you can just say something like, if you have two competing theories, it's normally best to pick the simplest one. So how is Occam's razor relevant to this exercise? If someone doesn't have an answer, you can reveal that normally picking the shortest or simplest sentence is the best option. And finally, what techniques can you use to shorten sentences? So there are lots of answers to this, but you're really looking for things like active voice, converting overly long sentences into lists, um, using a glossary, combining multiple words into a single word equivalent, um, and perhaps deleting unnecessary words or clauses. And that's it. That's exercise four. Thank you for listening.